Good morning. Thank you for joining us for an oral history interview at the Campbell County Training School Complex. My name is Tanya Marriott, the oral historian. Uh, could you please state your name and today's date for the record? Frank James, December 19th, 2023. Thank you. Uh, could you please tell us about your family, your parents, any siblings, where you were born and grew up? Okay. Um, my parents' name were Cleveland James and Virginia James. I grew up right here in Rustburg, maybe three miles east of here, and come from a large family, five boys and seven girls, which set of twin boys and a set of twin girls. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about what family life was like? Growing up, um, we had to, then it was so many, we had to help each other and the chores, babysitting, changing diapers. Um, it was busy. It was free time, but most time it was family time together. Um, just, it was enjoyable. So what year uh, did you attend the Campbell County Training School? I, I started in 1952. Okay. And can you tell me, what do you remember about the teachers or teacher or teachers uh, that taught you at the school? They, it seemed, it seemed like they went out of their, out of their way to make sure that you learned what they were trying to teach you. And it was like it was, you were part of their family. It was more like a, a family atmosphere. So, you know, if you had questions, you asked them, they would go out of their way to answer you and make it clear as possible where you would understand it. Okay. Any teacher in particular that stands out to you in your memory? I would say Miss Brown in the first grade. She was my first grade teacher. And she was short stature, but you couldn't get away with anything. That was my next question. How <laughs> how was discipline handled in the school? If you didn't turn in your assignments, if you were cutting up during class, how was discipline handled? Well, um, if you didn't finish your homework or assignments and get them turned in on time, um, when everybody else went out for recess, um, you stayed back in the room and you finished it. No matter what, you were gonna finish your assignment and get it turned in. So can you tell us what a typical class day was like? Well, um, when we first got to class, the very first thing was uh, they would take roll and then uh, they would do the lunch count. And after that, it was a uh, pledge of allegiance. That was every single day. And then um, did, um, in the first grade, did ABCs, um, reading classes. Okay. It was lunch provided at the school or did you bring your own lunch? Mainly everybody brought their own lunch, but then the cafeteria staff, they had um, hot lunches but it was limited. Can you tell me what you remember about the materials that you used, the books um, that you used in your classroom and what condition the books were? Well, the, the books were, uh, they stayed with the, the classroom. And let me see, what was it? Um, we Come and Go, Dick and Jane, 
the primer books, um, some of them were in pretty bad shape, but that was all we had at the time. Did you take field trips or do any other activities at the school, school carnivals? No, we, we didn't uh, do field trips, but um, in May, we had the uh, May exercise. It was um, each class had a little program that they did, um, wrap the uh, maypole races. Uh, can you tell us uh, what the bathroom facilities were like at the school? Back then, we had um, either a three-holer or a four-holer outside bathroom. And um, instead of a urinal, it was a, a homemade urinal. It was dig a, dig a pit and, you know, it was enclosed. Um, the even when it, when it was raining, uh, you know, every, every so often we would have a, a break or before uh, assembly, um, they used to let us go to the bathroom. And once we get to the door, it's who can get there first. It was like a, a foot race. Thank you. So for, um for the school, were there any activities or re responsibilities uh, that the boys were required to do uh, that you recall? Yes, um, the custodians used to come in in the morning in the wintertime and start the uh, pot fire in the pot belly stoves. And after the class, after we got here, then we had to get the coal and keep the fire going all day, you know, for for heat. It wasn't central air or that. And the the girls, they mainly um, cleaned the, the blackboards and either they would take the erasers outside and, you know, de-chalk them or uh, the the boys would um, also do that. Okay. So what what was the academic year for the school? September. Yeah, we 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 started in in September. And, and then and then you would get out in. Um, it was the the first first part of June. It was a lot of um, people that was, you know, working. Their their parents were working in tobacco and stuff like that. So they get out of. We, they used to let us out um, so we could, you know, help with the um, with the planting. And how did you get to school? Did you walk or take a bus? Um, took a bus. Do you remember your bus driver? Um, yes, it was uh, Mr. Gibson. He used to live in in Concord. Okay. How long of a how long of a bus ride was that? Uh, maybe two minutes. Oh. But after after we moved uh, down to uh, by New Free Spring Baptist Church. Um, that that ride was uh, close to twenty minutes. Are there any experiences or memories that you have related to uh, going to or children all going to black children going to one school and white children, or the differences? Did you notice the differences at your school and learn about the, the way things were in the white schools? Yes. Um, when we went to, we, we came back uh, for PTA and the 
when when we were were here for for PTA, the atmosphere was it it was good, but that they were trying to um, get new materials, um, you know, books, um, uh, refurbished the classrooms, and you know we we could know the we knew the difference uh between our material and what the the other the, the white kids um had and we we knew um we were lower on the totem pole do you remember any experiences um because the nation at that time was pushing for integration. Do you remember any sit-ins or protests at that time uh, going on to integrate the schools? Mm, not really, but um, it, it was, you know, at, at, at church, they were trying to get it, um, get a, a, a protest set up, but it, it didn't materialize. Okay. Um, do you remember uh, your parents in, enforcing uh, the importance of education? Yes, uh, once we got home from school, we had, I think it was like a 10 or 15 minute break for a snack. And then after that, it was homework. And it had to get done before you could do anything else. And then you get started on your chores. Mm -hmm. But um, education was, it was at the top of the list. We had, had to have it. So what do you think of the efforts now, the efforts to collect the memories and legacies of the students who attended um, the Rosenwald Washington schools? I think it's an outstanding idea because we can, if we get it, everything set up, people can come in and see what it was like back then and can compare to what it was then to what it is today and see the difference and how far everything has come. Why do you think that that's important for our young people to know now? Um, it, I think it's important because um, it would let the young people today see what happened in the past and the way things are now. And that way they won't take everything for granted. Uh, did you attend a church, local church in the community? What was the church that your family attended? Um, New Free Spring Baptist Church, about 20 minutes east of here. And do you feel like there was uh, support from the church uh, in educating the black youth in the community? Yes. Um, the, you know, when we went to Sunday school, the teachers and the pastor, um, you know, gathered the children and talk to them, you know, talk to us about um, education and how far it can take you if you got a, a good work in education. Um, is there anything you would like to add to the interview that I have not asked you? Any memories or anything else that stands out to you uh, that you remember um, when you were attending the school? I, I just like to say um, the, my my teachers while I was here they were like family they looked like they went out of their way to help you achieve yeah my um, my teachers um, I really appreciate all of the effort and diligence that they used to make sure that we got a quality education, um, even though 
it was it was some rough patches in there, but they just they um, continue to work with us and helped us to survive. When you say rough patches, <laughs> <laughs> what what were rough patches? Um, Sometimes you know you you had. Um, Assignments that you really didn't want to finish, but um, they convinced you you have to have to um, finish it and uh, you know achieve the the outcome because later on in life it's going to be some things that you can't just pass off and and let it go. Do you remember your principal from the school? Yes. What, um, was he, what was he like? Stern. I mean, it was... If you had to go to the office, you didn't want to go but one time. Did, did you think that that, would, that worked, though? Was oh, that I know it worked. <laughs> Yes. Do you, do you, I'm sorry, what was his name? Do you remember this? Uh, Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Okay. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you so much for joining us for an oral history interview.